Fictional girlfriends have been popular since the dawn of time. We started drawing them on the walls of our caves, then we began carving them into marble statues, and now we can just create them through a few methods using generative AI. And this tutorial will be showing you a workflow for creating your own AI girlfriend, so you can drive the boomers mad and drive the e-girls out of business at the exact same time. This workflow is based around using purely prompts to drive a consistent character and is partially driven by luck in terms of getting the right details, but it's also one of the simplest methods that doesn't involve delving into complex tools to get a good result. Ultimately, this is just one of many techniques that I'll upload, so if you aren't a fan of this method, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're alerted when the next video lands, but enough chit chat, let me give it to you bite sized. Now there are a few things you will need to replicate my results. I'm using the Absolute Reality Checkpoint as it creates very realistic images and allows for a greater degree of variety compared to some other checkpoints I've experimented with in the past. I'll be downloading two upscalers, UltraSharp and SuperScale, as these are fantastic for realistic images, and even though SuperScale is superior in detail, the UltraSharp can be good for anime-based models. I'll be using both the Bad Dream and Unrealistic Dream Embedding, which works well with the checkpoint to produce better results, and is placed within the negative prompt. Laura's are optional, but I like to play around with them to push the realism and style of my images, and I'll be using two, Instant Photo for a more photographic look, and Dark Light for better lighting. I'll be installing After Detailer, which can help us control how our character looks, as we're adjusting the inpainting stage rather than the image generation stage, and it can be useful for correcting artifacts in our image. Haku IMG will be useful for editing the image to try and get that photograph effect and you can install this from the extension tab by searching for its name. And to finish, I'm using a clip skip of 2 alongside the MSE 840,000 V and I'll link everything in the description. So this workflow will revolve around using a name to drive consistent faces and then using prompting techniques to drive additional detail for a unique look. To do this, we need to realize that stable diffusion can be very stereotypical when it comes to names. If I were to use a name like Sophie, we'll get a Caucasian person compared to using a name like Park, which will give us a more Korean aesthetic, or Inea, which leans more towards the Middle East, or even Babatunde, which sounds more African. I think this may be because stable diffusion has names associated with people and its data, which allows you to reference celebrities and, in this instance, find the face associated with a name or a combination of names. But unfortunately, one downside of this method is that different names from the same culture won't necessarily result in a diverse set of faces, as seen in this image, where I've gone with a typical British name, but we've got similar faces across different names. And speaking of which, you can also combine celebrity names to get unique faces, whether that's through specifying their names as a prompt, or in my case, using prompts alternating, to switch between the specified names every step. You can see how we're getting some blending and you can add the celebrity name twice to increase the prominence of that person, leading to more unique looking faces while maintaining that consistency. Once you decide on a name and a face that you like, we can then focus on prompting in those additional details. I'm using some standard prompts for quality, such as photorealistic and raw photo, and some negative prompts including open mouth, so our character's mouth is closed. You can change these to suit your preferences. Now let's start with After Detailer, as we can use this to drive some adjustments to our character at the inpainting stage, which can help us get a more unique face. I'll be using face, eye, and hand model, so we can inpaint those areas without manual work on the default settings. The face and eyes will use a separate width and height at 768, and in the faces prompt section, I'll add in soft lip, skinny, and filter trim for that dip beneath the nose. Now moving on to our prompt box, I'll add in Asian, white, within square brackets, with a pipe between them. So every step, it will switch from Asian to white, as we're alternating the prompts. I've opted to go for a white jumper, grey pleated skirt, and in terms of the hairstyle, I'll go for curtain bangs. Now something you'll probably notice, is that we're getting actual curtains in our image, due to the name of our hairstyle. And a fix for this, is to delay the implementation of the hairstyle, with square brackets, so we have less steps to implement that prompt over the image generation's total steps. Now will be a good time to add in the background, which will help further remove the curtains, and I'll add in a modern neighborhood background. Now another problem is that our character is appearing sharp and looks like she was photoshopped into the image. 
A brilliant trick for fixing this is to delay your entire prompt using the square bracket method, delaying everything by about two steps by adding our background at the start of our prompt, so we generate our background first and then the character and everything else afterwards. This technique is amazing as it will absolutely change the composition of your image, helping your character feel like a part of the scene. You can also add in a fisheye lens prompt to somewhat distort the lens, which can help add some visual interest to the image. Lastly, I'll add in those two LoRa's I downloaded using a low weighting so we can see whether or not they improve the overall image. I'll also add Asian into the negative prompt as the instant photo LoRa can make your generations look more Asian by default and I wanted to counteract it a bit. Now at this stage, if I generate a series of images, you can see that we have that consistency while also keeping those extra details we specified. And this is all driven by that name we provided. And if you find you're getting the same face despite changing the name, try lowering the after detailers denoising strength for the face model. I also decided at this stage to download an additional checkpoint called Realistic Vision. And I used this with the refiner at 60% to help bump up the realism. And at this stage, all that's left to do is prompt in the details you want and generate a series of images until you get an image you like. There will be limits to how much you can control through prompting alone, especially regarding the color bleeding, and I'm keen to keep this as a prompting focus method rather than bringing in control net and other tools, as this will drastically change the results and increase the levels of complexity. Now the only thing left to do is to take an image you like and run it through a few filters to try and replicate a photograph effect. You can do this in GIMP or any photo editor of your choice, but I'll be using Haku IMG as it's simple and can be used within Automatic One. Different photographs have different looks, but a popular way to trick the human eye into thinking that something is a real image is through imperfections such as film grain, playing with the exposure and adding some blurriness. I personally like to add a bit of exposure, noise and maybe some contrast and a tiny bit of blur to lessen the sharpness and then I'll send the image to the extras tab and upscale it by two using the same upscaler. And that brings us to the end of this workflow, which was hopefully easy to follow and can act as a great starting point for generating images before bringing in other tools like ControlNet. A big thanks to the supporters, and if you found this helpful, drop a like and subscribe. This is Bite Size Genius, and I hope you enjoyed.